And we now have some new reporting from Outfront regular Andrei Soldatov, a Russian reporter who's now banned in his home country. The reporting is that the Kremlin is trying to use churches here in the United States to recruit spies, intelligence sources. Look at this FBI document warning Russian Orthodox churches that they could be targets for recruitment by Russian intelligence services and, quote, coerced to participate in intelligence operations via blackmail. Well, Andre joins me now. And Andre, uh, you know, obviously, usually uh, you, you're across the Atlantic. So it is it's so nice after so many times and all, uh, all your reporting uh, during this war to see you in person. So um, you've got this new reporting revealing Russian intelligence services are trying to infiltrate uh, churches in the United States. What have you learned? Well, I think the most important part of this story is not only that the Russian security and intelligence agencies found a way how to use the church, but that the church is apparently quite happy to be used, and not mm. only by providing, say, ideological ammunition for the war and for the Russian spies, which is hardly news, but also in a very direct way, because there is a special memorandum, uh, as far as we know, compiled by church officials as early as in 2009, and in this memorandum, it is absolutely clear that the church tried to establish some rules of cooperation with the Russian security services, including helping and providing operational support, which is a direct help to spies. So, all right, so how vast is this network? I mean, how wide-ranging could this be? It is a big network because uh, the Russian Orthodox Church is, uh, is very well present here in the United States, and actually it's getting bigger. More and more people think that uh, the appeal of the Russian Orthodox Church all this talk about family fa uh, values and traditional values is, uh, is a way for uh, Native Americans, for American Protestants to convert and to start coming to, uh, to the church wow. of the Russian Orthodox Church. All right. So um, you have also done extensive reporting about the oligarchs and Putin's inner circle. Uh, there was a public criticism, public criticism from Putin uh, of a prominent Russian businessman, an oligarch. Uh, the oligarch now says he is, quote, totally against Russia's barbaric invasion of Ukraine. Comes out and says that now. Putin responded, right? So he responded, uh, said that this uh, this person who's a, a tech, a technology a company uh, leader is forced to make statements in order to preserve his foreign businesses and assets. Previously, he was sitting silently. God bless him. It doesn't bother us. Um, uh, uh, two questions on this. One, Putin obviously relies heavily on the oligarchs, still does, has been able to control them and keep them quiet, even amidst all this, Prigozhin. Um, where does P uh, Putin stand with that group right now? Well, actually, he's still trying to, and he's very much in control of his people. He's really good at spreading as a message of fear. Mm -hmm. At the same meeting you mentioned, uh, he also made a remark about his uh, former ally, uh, Anatoly Chubais, who was uh, the founder and the father of the Russian privatization co uh, uh, program back in the 1990s. Uh, Chubais also left the country, and he was and Putin was asked about Chubais, and Putin immediately said that, look, Chubais used to run a state-owned corporation. We found some problems in these corporations. Mm. We don't have criminal cases as yet uh, against this guy, but we can have some problems for so him. So threatened. And are they, are they scared by what happened to, to Prigozhin? Absolutely, yes. And also they remember of Novichok. Right, right, if they weren't already because of Navalny. All right, Absolutely. thank you very much. Wonderful to see you, Andre. Thank you.